What's up guys, this is Jay from Encounter Wargaming and you're going to take a journey with me to Hogtown 40k's Lethal Lottery Doubles Tournament. So this is the second year now that Hogtown 40k has hosted a Lethal Lottery Doubles Tournament. Now I love these tournaments. For those of you that don't know what a Lethal Lottery means, it's basically like instead of a normal doubles, doubles tournament, where you would pick a buddy and you would both take a 1,000 point list or a very small list, put them together and create a 2,000 point list to face against two other players who equally have 1,000 point lists or the equivalent. With the Lethal Lottery, the way it works is that your ally is always random. So the person you're going to be playing with, as well as the two people you're going to be playing against, is completely randomly drawn. Basically, each player gets a 1,000 point list. Now, this list has to be battle forged, of course. Um, you are allowed to take multiple detachments, but you can't take multiples of the same detachment. At 1,000 points, you can't really do a take all comers list, you know what I mean? You kind of have to specialize in one thing, which is what makes the lethal lottery thing so volatile. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys the list that I'm bringing up close, and then uh, we're gonna take a journey to dueling grounds and go to the tournament. So let's check out my army that I'm bringing. All right, here they are in the mutant horde. For a thousand points, um, this is the list that I'm taking. Now, the reason this is so iconic that I'm bringing this army to the Lethal Lottery Doubles Tournament is because I built this army for last year's Lethal Lottery Doubles Tournament. So, the command squad here actually, all the members of it except for the one Laz Cannon guy, um, I actually built for Hogtown because uh, the Warmaster Nick, club president, he asked me to uh, build some like one-off chaos models for um, a certain scenario. I, I just went crazy with it. I found a bunch of bits in my box and I just threw a bunch of stuff together and painted it up and I was like, hey, here's six models. And uh, they loved it. So um, I took that those six models and thought, whatever, I got all these Chaos Hounds kicking around, I got all these Orcs kicking around, I got my Delac Necromunda gang, which I've never used, so might as well build an army. So I uh, mi basically min-maxed the uh, Renegades and Heretics in Imperial Armor 13. So this is the this is the list, guys. So Mutant Overlord, he's a uh, Arch Demagogue with his command squad, having the uh, command net box, which gives his leadership to everybody within 12 inches, as well as a Laz Cannon team, a plasma gun, um, and then of course the two units of mutants, each led by an enforcer with a plasma pistol and melted bombs, just in case I have to run into that. The 12 Chaos Spawn that just get right in your face. Uh, three missile launchers, which actually do a great job of distracting people. I mean, they don't really kill anything. They might take a few hull points off something or, you know, kill a few marines here or there. They don't really destroy a lot, but they definitely distract the opponent a lot. So they're a good addition always. Um, and of course, just because we have a thousand points in this entire combined arms detachment of mutants I've built here is like only like 600 points or something due to how cheap the spawn are. It's amazing. I was able to throw in Bellicor for 350 points and then in order to legally use him I have to take an ally detachment of course so one HQ and one troops being the three Nurglings which are like the cheapest possible troop choice you could ever take. So anyway, enough talking about my army. Let's go to the tournament. I'm 
beautiful life Don't you live it well I to roam around the street Living pop as well Well, everything's a box inside a box Inside a box, inside a box Inside a box, inside a box Inside a box, inside a box All right, so game one, um, I end up getting paired with Phil's beautiful Eldar army against two Dark Eldar players. Weird combination, right? Chaos and Eldar versus uh, two Dark Eldar players, um, Dave and Mike. Great players, great guys, uh, great game. So basically we have five objectives in the middle of the table here, and uh, more or less we just are, you know, squabbling over them over the first couple turns. Of course the uh, Dark Elder players use all their fast moving skimmers to move in on that way. Since you are starting objectives at the beginning of the or turn, so you have to pretty much jump on them uh, immediately. My missiles you just saw there actually ran away very early in the game from uh, Venom Fire, which kind of sucked. Um, because they are great for taking out light vehicles. But anyway, bringing us here to the mid game, um, we're basically squabbling over objectives. It's pretty much tied, both uh, both sides at this point. But then these grotesques here, they just eat their way through all my spawn. And then here you see them jumping on my command squad. Just take them out, brutal. Um, Phil here actually tried to tank shock um, and ended up immobilizing himself, which totally sucked, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, as you can see, he's got a bunch of objectives. I scored a bunch of objective points. The Dark Elder players, of course, like I said, kept tied with us most of the game. But uh, by the end of the game, we, uh, me and Phil, we won the primary objective. Uh, me getting one secondary and Phil getting two secondaries. So that gives us the game. Thanks for the game, guys. Game two, so I end up getting paired with Connor's beautiful 30k Iron Hands army against our very own Adam's notorious Sisters of Battle, as well as Dana's Space Wolves. And you'll see Dana in our next battle report to be released, our next 40k battle report, where he's going to fill an all Dreadnought army. But for right now, let's get back to this game. Basically, my spawn charge right at the Thunder Wolves, more or less doing nothing to them, but whatever. So Connor drops in his Ironclad basically at the back there. Where you see his nasty exorcists and uh, takes two hull points off them, so that's wicked awesome. Um, here we are at mid game. That dreadnought you see right there basically was surrounded by mutants and took them all out single handedly. And then, of course, Adam sends in his penitent engines to back up Dane and, and Celestine to back up the Thunderwolves. Uh, succeeding, as you can see, <laughs> the Thunderwolves came out victorious. There's like one spawn left in there, and the uh, sisters just keep moving along as they always do. So uh, basically this tactical squad right here gets us our deployment zone. Um, my spawn, being objective secured, gets us the midfield, and then my nurglings that keep struck at the back get us their deployment zone, bring us the game. Okay, so game three. And I'm getting paired up with Emmett's Genes to their cult army against uh, Connor, different Connor this time, there's two Connors in that club, his Imperial Guard army, and Mackenzie's Tyranids. Now Mackenzie you will recognize from our past 40k battle reports, he killed with the Ulfi Eldar against my, my mutants, these very same mutants, plus my, uh, my Raptor Talon, but anyway, that aside. Um, here we go. So at the beginning of the game, Emmett deep strikes his first curse formation in behind the enemy lines, which is which I didn't think was that big of a deal. I mean, it's even the Gene Steelers and the Patriot, right? But he actually ends up there. There he ends up taking out a Flyrant and the two tanks with them. 
disorder charge craziness and of course this here I just wanted to show you guys uh, my spawn attacking the ridiculously large unit and gods and getting every single wound but anyway here we are so mid game um, most of the guard back line is just like taken out and the gene suitors there end up using the guards Lehman Russ against them to take out most of the infantry you see there my uh, nerglings just keep struck in and then my nerglings will move over take the objective move it back here my mutants of course trying to close the gap there as you see um, to prevent that infantry platoon from taking out my nerglings but of course it shoots them to death and, uh, but not being able to take the relic from us uh, my mutants can still take it, and uh, that wins us the game. So, thanks for a good game, guys. That was actually the best one all the whole day. So, we're going to go from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, so, we've got six shiny Hogtown dice. Woo! Or the lowest battle score. <laughs> uh, looking at it. Yeah, they call it. It goes to Jack Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, I play Chaos Space Marines from the Chaos Space Marines Codex, and the first time ever playing out of that codex. It's just too what I expected. So this this prize for me is a bit of a letdown. Paul and I tried to source a cow heart and fell through. Wow. Uh, <laughs> no, well, I, I, just, I got the heart, but they cleaned it for us, so it just looks like a big wow. piece of So now I got a bunch of heart in my fridge. <laughs> well, How more, more, yeah. more heart than I normally So, what I got instead, uh, anyone who lives in the junction, have you ever heard of Sorella Sausages? That sausage Bill knows this place. Um, so he's a gamer, so he gave me a good deal. Um, so we've got eight sausages here, I think they're like four lemongrass cumin, four Ooh. hot Italian sausage, Whoa. and a gift certificate. For a sausage and a soup, if you get back oh, there for the winner. Yes. For the butcher, the the, uh, the top four were all very very close. Uh, that did come down to some tie breaks, um, but we give you the best possible prize that you can win. So for the butcher, it's called their mask. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so these next two were actually tied across the board for everything, outside of best general. Um, so for best presentation, and uh, as I told the ladies who came down here, who has the prettiest stuff, I said uh, Mr. Paul Fowler does. So, Paul. He's still very able to paint yellow without blowing your brains out. Um, for best ally, this is the guy you always want on your team. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to win, but you're going to have a good time. So this one goes to Adam. Hey. And our best overall. Does so anyone guess who it's going to be? Because it's going to be a little bit of a, a strange case. So our best overall, um, who just toughs it out and sometimes, you know, gets a little fed up when he, when he can't win. But he did fantastic today. Raph. Raph.